there's a couple people to look at it, but not too many. All right, so here we go. This is number one from the quiz. It says, um, identify the similar triangles. So I call the first triangle LMN. You could have used any um, arrangement of those three letters that you wanted to. But the second one needs to be, uh, the corresponding parts need to match up. So you've got to figure out which one matches up with the L, which one goes with the M, and which one goes with the N. So if you take a look at it, I'll tell you what, just um, real quick here. Let's just kind of sketch this out. It may not be perfect, but it'll be close enough. This is L. I'm not going to do every one of these, but we'll do this one. Q and P and N. Okay, and it says that this is parallel to this, and that's all they tell you, isn't it? All right, so watch. Let's do that. The first thing I, and when, when I taught this, I, I go back on the video and look at it. When I taught this, I marked these angles so I could see which angle goes with what angle from this triangle to this triangle. Well, first of all, first thing that pops into my head is this. I see these vertical angles, so I mark those equal to each other. Everybody sees that, don't they? All right, so um, what else do you see? I got parallel lines. Parallel lines cut by transversal. So look at this angle right here. This angle right here is going to equal this one down here. That's because of alternate interior angles. And so that means that this one, of course, is going to go with this one. Alternate interior angles plus is the third angle. they got to be equal to each other. So let's see. If I go LMN, LMN, <coughs> what order did I go? I went two arcs, then what? Three arcs, then one arc. So I went two, three, one in this the way that I drew it out. You didn't have to draw it exactly like this with the way the arcs are. This is just how I did it. Okay, so I've got two, three, one. So what am I going to do over here? I'm going to go two, three, one. So what do I got? P, Q, N. Is that right? Yep. Now look, some of you guys mixed up the order on this one, but you still showed, and I, you know, some people put like QPN, and I changed it. I didn't even take off for that. Wasn't that nice of me? Let me hear it. Yes, it was nice of me. Okay, that's what I thought. There you go. All right, now we've crossed the line. Okay, so uh, these two triangles are congruent, or not congruent, but what? Similar to each other. That's the first thing it says to do. It says identify the similar triangles. That's what I mean by identifying the similar triangles. You had to do that in homework problems. Okay, we've read off all the answers. You should have looked at the odd answers in the back when we did the homeworks. We had problems like this where you had to identify the triangles, the similar triangles. So that's not uncommon for you to do. Second part said, now look, I had some people do this, but then it says find, the, find uh, each measure. Anybody want to admit why they might have gotten that wrong? There was one common thing. What was it? Well, they might have mixed up the letters, but they didn't plug it in for X. They didn't, right, they found X, but they didn't plug it in to find the measure out that they're asking for. So look at it. It says find each measure, and then they put these letters. They put LM, and then they put QP. Do you see that? So you had to find the length of LM and the length of QP. But the first thing you had to do was solve for X. So uh, let's put some numbers in here. So let's just change colors, just make it a little different. So they said that this is 18, this right here is x plus 3, this is 12, and x minus 1. Okay? And what you have to do, you got to find what x is, and then you got to find these lengths, lm. So let's take a look. First of all, I'm going to find a scale factor. I'll just shorthand it, scale factor. So what I try to do is I try to find two sides that are corresponding, and then I know the actual lengths of both of those sides. Dean? <coughs> Right, you got to find x, but bef but that's not your final answer, though. That's what I was talking about, that a lot of people just found x, and they didn't plug it back in to find these, okay? So if that's all you did was find x, you might have gotten it right, the x part, but you had to plug it back in, because this is the question. The question doesn't say, tell me what x is equal to, even though you need to find what x is, okay? So let's do this. So lm... Uh, let's find the scale factor. That's what I was doing. So take take a look at this. This is a number that I know. It's the only number I know on this triangle. So hopefully it compares to a number over here. There's not really many other choices, is there, over here? Um, so let's see if they actually do compare to each other. Look at 18. What angle is 18 opposite? The angle with what? How many arcs? Three arcs. So you come over here. Look at the angle with three arcs here. 
and look at the side that's opposite that. It's the 12. So the 18 and the 12 are the corresponding sides. They're the ones that match up with each other. So I'm going to go 18 to 12. All right, you reduce that, and what's 6 goes into both of those, right? 3 over 2. So that's my scale factor. That's an important number that I'm going to use. So now let's see the other two sides. They made this pretty easy because they didn't give you too many choices on what could correspond. So if you weren't really sure, it's pretty much a good guess that 18 and 12 probably go together because they're the only two with just numbers, and these are the only two with just x's. So you know, if you were just to guess and look at this, you probably would have gotten lucky. But I'm showing you exactly. What if I gave you all three? What if I gave you values for all three of these? you'd really have to know which one matches up with what. So anyway, let's look at this. Look at this side right here, LM. It's opposite the one arc. Look at this side right here, this x minus one. It's opposite the one arc. So they have to go together. So what do we do? We take our scale factor, three to two, and set it to the other corresponding sides. And that would be x plus three to x minus one. See what I did? Took the scale factor. Remember, if the, if the triangles are similar to each other, the sides are in proportion. What does it mean to be in proportion? It means the, the um, corresponding sides must have the same ratio. Well, the ratio of this side to this side was 3 to 2. That's got to equal the ratio of this side to this side. All right, that's what it means to be in proportion. So I cross multiply. When I cross multiply, don't forget to take this and multiply it through this whole thing. I remember one or two people, either this class or the other class, I can't remember, but forgot to distribute. They just put 3x minus 1. But you can't do that. You've got to go 3x minus what? 3. Good. And then you got to take 2 and multiply it by this. And that would be 2x plus 6. Now the algebra is simple. Subtract 2x from both sides. Add a 3 to both sides. So x is 9. Is that my final answer? Do I circle it? Am I finished? No, I'm not. Because that's not really what they ask for. Even though we know we have to find it. What do they ask for? They ask for this right here. Lm and Qp. So, let's change this up. Let's, uh, let's find LM. What's LM equal to? It's equal to x plus 3, right? So what's x plus 3? Well, it's 9 plus 3, which is 12. All right, so LM is equal to 12. Do me a favor, if you would, on a quiz or a test. Make sure, if you have all this work on here, don't just write LM equals 12, just kind of sitting in the middle of all this mess. All right, circle it so that I can look at it. On some of your questions, I really had to search to find what the answers were. And, um, you know, I mean, I looked really hard, and it just would save you from me making a mistake and not marking it, you know, correct, if you circle them and it really stands out to me. All right, let's do QP. Well, QP is equal to what? X minus 1, isn't it? So we plug it in. X is 9 minus 1, and that's 8. So QP equals 8, circle that as well, and then you're done. That's your answer. So you basically have three answers, don't you? That's your first one right here, where you identify the similar triangles, and here are the other two. All right. So you basically you have three answers to this. Does that help a little bit? Yeah? Any questions on it before we move on? All right. Number two is very similar to that, so um, I'll just leave it at because I wrote down the answers. If you got it wrong, I wrote down the right answer. So you saw what we just did on that problem. That should help you there. Uh, let's take a look at number three. What's that? All right, okay, I'll tell you what. Um, yeah, there was something that was a little problem. I'm not going to draw the whole thing out, but I'll, I'll show the scale factor. Watch. The scale factor, if I compare six to eight, and then you reduce that, um, What's that? 2 goes into that 3 and 4 times. Okay, so the scale factor is 3 to 4. Everybody with me on that? But you got to look at the other, the other two sides. Look at it. Um, see the side of the little triangle, PTS? That's x plus 3. So I'm comparing 3 to 4. I'm comparing the little triangle to the big triangle. So look at the side of the little triangle. It's x plus 3. Most people got that. But here's what a lot of people did. They compared x plus 3 to x minus 1. Is x minus 1 a side of the whole entire large triangle? Look at it. It's not, is it? So you can't just compare x plus 3 to x minus 1. You have to compare x plus 3, the, that side of that small triangle, that's the entire side of that small triangle, you have to compare it 
to the entire side of the large triangle. So what would that entire side of that large triangle be? That's right, it would be x plus 3 plus x minus 1. That would be the whole entire side. So you have to compare the side of the small triangle to the side of the big triangle. So what would this be? You add them up, that's 2x plus 2, good. So that would be 2x plus 2. And then that's how you would set it up. You do your cross multiply, solve for x, plug it back in, and you should be good. You should have gotten x is 3 when you do the math. You plug it back in, PS is R, PR is 8. Does that make sense? That was that right there, that right there was the toughest part about that problem. Okay? A lot of people actually got that, and and we've talked about that before. Go back on the YouTube lessons and look at it. And we do talk about it. you have to compare it to the whole side of the triangle, not just to a little part of it, not to a segment of the triangle. You gotta compare a side to a, an entire side of a triangle. Okay? All right. Let's do number three now. I can't see that very well, can you? Let's try, let's just try red, see what that looks like. Okay, it says a lighthouse cast a 128 foot shadow. So you don't have to be real uh, fancy on this. Okay, here's the lighthouse. That, that up and down distance just represents the lighthouse. And it says it casts a shadow. So where's the shadow? Is the shadow going this way? Where's the shadow? It's along the ground, isn't it? So that's 128 feet. This is the lighthouse right here. It says a nearby lamp post that measures 5 feet 3 inches casts an 8 foot shadow. So what we're doing is the lamp post is shorter because it creates a, uh, a lot shorter of a shadow. I'll tell you what, let's put it. It's probably more accurate if we put it about right there. And it casts a shadow. Here's its shadow right here. So from this little bit, I'll tell you what. Um, Let's do this. Oops, a little far, too far. There we go. All right, so that's the 128 foot shadow, and then here's a lamp post that measures five. Now here's a common problem a lot of people made on this. It says five feet three inches, right? Five feet. I'll tell you. I'll do this up here. Five feet three inches. A lot of people put this into the numbers. They set it up right, but a lot of people wrote 5.3. Is 5.3 feet the same as 5 feet 3 inches? No, it's not. Okay? This is inches aren't in decimals, they're by 12s, aren't they? They're they're split up in 12s, not into 10s. This would be if you split it up into 10s. Okay, feet are not split up into uh, tens, they're, they're split up into 12 inches. So really, this is 5 feet 3 over what? 3 over 12 inches, right? If I wanted to figure out what it is in feet, does that make any sense? So how many, um, how many feet is 3 inches? It's what? It's 3 over 12, which is 1 fourth, which is, if you want to use a decimal, say it, 0.25. So it's not 5.3, what is it? 5.25 feet. Right, that's what it is in feet, because everything has been given in feet here, except that one value, they gave you this in inches, 5 feet, 3 inches, so in, don't make it 5.3, that's not what it is, and a lot of people did that, not a lot, a few did that, it's 5.25, so that's what I'm going to write right here, 5.25, that's this length right there, okay, so really, what's going on, there's your shadow here, Okay, that's the shadow from the lighthouse. This, uh, I'm sorry, this is the shadow from the lighthouse. This is the shadow from the little lamp post right here. And what does the question say? What is the height of the lighthouse right there? Oh, the, um, this creates an eight foot shadow, by the way. That little bit from here to here, okay, is eight feet. All right, you with me so far? Now, what we have is we have a triangle, very, it's very similar to number two. All right, it's kind of like a, um, it's kind of a triangle in a triangle. If you wanted to, you could do this. This might make it a little easier for you. I don't know. This is the big triangle, and this is, might not be exactly drawn to scale, but that's okay. And this is the little triangle, okay? That's a right, and that's right. So what do we have here? We've got H here. We have what? That whole shadow from the lighthouse is 128, isn't it? What's the little height of that lamppost? 5.25. 5 
what's this length right here of the the shadow from the light the light post it's eight isn't it okay all right everybody with me on this now I got two triangles are they similar to each other sure they are because look what they do they share this common angle down here so that means this angle and this angle are equal they both are right have right angles so yeah they're similar triangles to each other so now if I want to set up my ratio look what I have um, let's compare the bottom to the bottom so that would be 128 over 8 equals and then what are we else we're going to compare left side to left side so right it's h over what 5.25 and now you can just plug that into a calculator if you wanted to well do the math first you could cross multiply but since h is already on the top let's do this let's multiply by 5.25 and I believe if you punch that into a calculator it comes out exactly 84 feet All right it's not rounded it's exactly 84 feet and, and um, look that if you would have put 5.3 in here I mean 5.3 is pretty close isn't it to 5.25 okay but it's not exactly we're not taking this and rounding it if this only goes two places I'm not gonna round it up to 5.3 I wanna find exactly how long it is and you can do that and it's just 84 feet all right, so that's how you do that one. Um, I think you guys are pretty good about four and five. Definitely number four, you guys got that pretty easy. Um, and, um, yeah, I think for the most part, you guys got number five pretty good, too. Let's, we got about 15 minutes. Let's take some questions from the, uh, from the study guide. So what? Let me read off the even answers to you real quick first, okay? And then, um, and then we'll take some questions. Okay, let's do number twenty-three from the study guide. If I could read it, where are we? There it is. Okay, let's draw this thing real quick. It says to estimate the height of a tree. It says Dave stands in the shadow of the tree, so that his shadow and the tree's shadow end at the same point. Well, let's draw that. All right. So let's use this to represent the tree. It's not going to be anything fancy. This is along the ground, and this is um, the guy. What's his name? Dave or something? Okay. And let's do this. Here, the sun's coming from this direction, and it probably will hit about like that. Okay. Let's just scooch this in so the ground ends at the same point as the shadow does. All right. So this is basically what we have right here. This is the tree. All right? And this is Dave, and these are the shadows that they cast. This whole line right there is a shadow that the tree casts. He's standing, okay, in the shadow of the tree. So he casts a shadow along the same line right here. So let's uh let's find some of these numbers again. It says Dave is 6 uh, feet 4 inches tall. So here's Dave right here. So Again, he's six feet, four inches tall. Let's put this into feet. Or we could put it in inches, but let's put it into feet. So it's six feet. Oops. It's six. What about four inches? It's four out of what? Four out of 12, which is four, um, one third. So let's write it as a fraction. Let's not put 6.3. Let's actually write it as a fraction. Because this is an exact number. 0.3 would be an approximation, wouldn't it? Because 0.3 keeps on going. So we'll write it 6 and a third. In fact, to make this a little easier for us, instead of writing it 6 and one third, it might be easier to turn it into improper. And what would that be? That would be 19 thirds. So it looks a little weird, but it's a little easier to work with if you have an improper. Okay. So this height right here is 19 over 3 feet. Everybody see what we did there? It's 4 out of 12, which is 1 third. 6 and a third, that's 18 plus 1, is 19 thirds. So that's the height of Dave. And then let's see what else does it say. Um, his shadow is 15 feet long. So from here to here is 15. Right? This little bit right there. And then it says if he's standing 66 feet away from the tree... Well, here's the tree. Here's where he's standing. So guess what this number is from here to here? What did I just say? 66 feet. Okay, so this is 66 feet from there to there. Does that make sense? He's standing here. He's 66 feet away from the tree. So that's that distance. Not the whole entire length. It's just from here to here. 
and then it says what's the height of the tree so that's what we're trying to solve for right there is the tree so uh, let's set, set up some ratios we don't have to split it into two triangles this time I don't think we did it earlier so I think you get the idea of what we're trying to do here so let's find um, first of all a scale factor well I don't know the length of the tree so I can't use that as my scale factor but I do know the length of this whole entire shadow cast by the tree it's not 66 what would it be 66 what plus 15 which is what's that 81 so the whole entire tree I'm going the big triangle to the small triangle all right so 81 is the whole the bottom of the big triangle and what's the bottom of the little triangle well it's 15 isn't it see that I'm comparing the whole thing I'm not going 66 to 15 I'm knowing the whole entire bottom of the big triangle which is 81 and I'm comparing it to the bottom of the little triangle which is 15 and so if I go from the big triangle to the little triangle, make that comparison, let's make this comparison over here on the side. The big side, we'll call it T for trees, all right, over Dave, which is 19 thirds. So now it's just a matter of just doing some cross multiplication. So let's do that. It's 15T equals 81 times 19 over 3. All right, and let's do this divide by 15. Now what's the same thing as dividing by 15 if we have fractions? It's multiplying by 1 over 15, isn't it? Alright, let's see what happens here. Um, let's see, 3 goes into 81, doesn't it? How many times is that? Like 17, is that right? Somebody do that real quick. Was it 27? 27, okay, I knew it had a 7 in there. So it's 27 times, so that goes 27 times, and that goes once. Let's see, what else goes? This goes, doesn't it? 3 goes into that 5 times, 3 goes into that 9 times. That's everything that'll go. So who's got a calculator? Ashley can help me out. What's 19 times 9? And then divide that by 5. Give me a number. Very good. 34.2. And that's exactly what, well, I didn't read it off because it was an odd problem, but that's in the back of the book, okay? So it's 34.2, and that's how tall the tree is right there. It's 34.2 feet. Now, if some of you guys look at your quiz, this just reminds me, some of you guys were getting crazy answers for what you're supposed to get. I mean, this is, what, 6 feet 4 inches, right? So this is a little more than 6 right here. This is 34. That kind of makes sense. What if I got this answer to be, I don't know, like less than 6 feet? Would that make any sense at all? No. Not if it was not if he was way further away than the shadow. This has to be a lot bigger than what this has to be. So just kind of make sure that your answers make sense when you do it. If they if this word problem doesn't make any sense to you at all, then you might want to rethink what you know how you approach the problem. Okay. All right. Let's do um. What are we at? Twenty-eight and fourteen. Let's try a different color this time. Let's go. 28. Let me find 28. Where are we? Okay, it's triangle. So let's try to draw this triangle. Kind of goes like this. Looks like this goes straight across here to about right there. And then this goes to about right there. And then we have an angle bisector. The angle bisector goes to here. Well, we have a theorem that deals with a triangle one triangle and an angle bisector. I know it's an angle bisector because those two angles are equal to each other. This side is 9, this side is 10, and they say, what is it, W? That's W, and then the whole thing from here to here is 30, 20, what am I, what number am I on? 36, right? Okay, so from here to here is 36, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find W. Remember the relationship? It says, see how this side right here is split into two different segments? Well, those two segments are proportional to the other two sides of your triangle. So, I don't really know this, but I can set up a ratio. I can go W to 10 is equal to this little part, not the whole thing, but this little part right here to 9. Well, do I know this little part? What if I actually knew this number? What if that number was... I don't know, 20. I'm just making a number up, okay? Let's just say this was 20. How would you figure out what this is? You subtract it, right? So, But you don't know it's 20, do you? You don't know what it is. But you still find this length right here, this little section right here, the same exact way. 
That's right, so I would make this 36 minus W. Does that make any sense? Because if that was just a regular number, right, you'd be able to figure out what that little length was. Well, it is a regular number. We just don't, we just happen to not know what the value of that number is. But you'd find this section the same exact way. So you go 36 minus W, and then cross multiply. I don't need to go through the rest of it, do I? You can go through it, cross multiply, solve for W, and what do you get? Like 19, I think. Okay, so you can do the math on your own on this one. So W is 19. All right, so that's how you do it. Remember what this is. If this is an angle bisector, it splits this opposite side right here into two segments that are proportional to the other two sides of your triangle. That's basically what it says. Again, look back on the lesson that we taught that. You'll see that on there. All right, and what was 14, I believe, right? What was the other one? All right, so let's find that one. 14, where are we? Okay, it's a word problem again. It says a board that's 12 feet long must be cut into two pieces that have lengths in a ratio of 3 to 2. Find the lengths of the two pieces. Okay, a board. Let me, let me think about this for a second. Okay, so, um, whoops, the lengths... Again, we don't care about the width or the area or anything like that. A board that's 12 feet long. So let's just um, let's just imagine. Oops. Okay. Again, we don't really care. I could just draw the. I could just make this a straight line if I wanted to, but the length of that is 12, and I want to cut it so that the ratio is 3 to 2, right? So let's just kind of. I don't know, cut it in here like this. Does that make sense? Okay, so the ratio is 3 to 2, so that's 3 to 2. That doesn't mean the length of this is 3 inches, does it, or 3 feet and 2 feet. It means the ratio is 3 to 2. So the whole entire thing is 12. You see that? So what's my ratio? It's what? It's 3. Um, let's see how I want to do this. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, because this is going to be 3 times a certain number plus 2 times a certain number is going to equal 12. So it's 3x plus 2x equals 12. Okay, and that's 5x equals 12. So x is what? 12 over 5, right? And um, so what do you do with that 12 over 5, though? You multiply it by 3 to get one length, and you take that and you multiply it by 2 to get the other length. And there's your two lengths. Keep the study guide to yeah, you tomorrow, keep your right? study guide to practice. Okay, go over some of these uh, YouTube lessons. Okay, they're all there for you. Just sit okay, there and watch them. Okay, and then it'll at least remind you a little bit of what's going to be on the test.